Hi, welcome to the show. I'm George Long. I'm Andrew Cohen. And this is Two Broke Sophomores. I'm really excited for our guest today. Today we have Isabel Erezia. She is the star of Pearson on USA. Premieres Wednesday nights at 10. It's a really great show. It is the spinoff of Suits. It focuses on Gina Torres' Jessica Pearson as she travels through the dirty world of Chicago politics. Uh... Isabel stars as um she stars as Yoli Castillo, who is the assistant to uh Torres' character, and they have amazing chemistry. She's so funny in the show. You guys really gotta check this show out. Um We uh, also have some exciting news. We have a new intro and outro. Yeah, they're pretty cool. They're pretty cool. It is uh it's brought to you by the band True Soul off their debut album. True soul. Ooh, fancy. It, they didn't. It's the, the name. Out. I'm. I don't know why they didn't. I feel like they. Their the album name is the same as the band name. It's like the True Souls album. True Soul didn't put much. I mean, work other, in other bands have done that, right? That's happened before. No, yeah, it's happened before. I. I mean, it's my cousin's band, so I wonder how we got them. Uh, it's a mystery. He said, uh, yeah. "I." I told my cousin he was like, "We can use the music as long as we promote it." I was like. What if I didn't promote it? What if I was just like, I used the music? I was like, is he going to sue me? Do you think he would sue me? I don't know. I I, I mean, your family. So I feel like he could just like, at the next family gathering, tell your mom. Tell my mom. And then it's like. I, a, I feel like that would be slightly worse. Because, you know, the lawsuit, that's just your wallet. But your mom. It's my dignity. Yeah, that's your dignity, too. It's my dignity at stake. But. And she'll make you sit on the stairs for ten minutes. No phone, no nothing. Just you got to sit on the stairs and think about what you've done. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. They we yeah. have a corner in our house specifically. Oh, you have a corner for the time. It's called the timeout corner. Ten minutes in the timeout corner. That that's tougher than any any court it's, could ever be. It's actually if she took the inspiration from the Chokey and Matilda. Oh wow! So there's a bunch of nails. There's a it's 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 insane. I'm telling you, some nails. There's broken glass. She closes the door, and if I'm tell if you move a muscle in the timeout corner, like you'll you'll get cut. It's it it it's it's dangerous. Honestly, oh. don't you don't want timeout in my house in the Cohen household. Yeah, it doesn't sound that fun. Yeah, it's it's not. It's I'm yeah, it sounds you. real bad. Real, real bad. But with all seriousness, he's he's a fantastic musician. He he plays bass in the band. Uh, it's honestly, I'm telling you, it's really, really great. He's uh, he's he he's he's going to Berkeley for jazz. So no, Berkeley's a good college. Yeah. So he you don't get into Berkeley unless you're like super. Talented. Yeah, you got to be good at music to get there. Yeah, he's really good. The band is really good. Check out their music uh, now on Apple Music or Spotify. Uh, anyways, how was your week, George? It's pretty good. Pretty tiring. I've been working quite a bit. Yeah, you told me you were you're watching Mall Rats. Yeah, I've been watching uh, Mall Rats. What? I've never seen Mall Rats. What is that? Uh, it's a Kevin Smith movie. Okay. And basically. It's about people chilling in a mall. I mean, there's more to it. Are they rats? No, they're humans. Um, are rat people are they rat human? No, sort? they're just they're just normal humans. But they like are they're like probably you know rat like. I'm guessing they're, they crawl around. No, they just hang out in a mall. They just hang out in a mall. Yeah. Is, is oh so it's kind of one of those movies that there's not really a plot. There's just like a. I mean, there's like a rough plot, but but it's it it's it's like a light it's a light movie I'm guessing. Yeah, it's not like super heavy, but it's it's really good. I enjoy it. Yeah. Well, uh, it's my birthday today. We're recording this on Sunday. Yeah, that's and, happy uh, birthday. Thank you. You're a year older now. I'm a year older. One year closer to dying. Aren't we all? <laughs> That's that's what birthdays are essentially. One thing I want on my birthday, I don't want anyone famous to die on my birthday. It's gonna happen one year, you know that, right? Yeah, it, it's gonna happen. I like I don't want DiCaprio to like 
trip and fall down the stairs. And then every year, August 18th, it's just, um, it's just people remember like, man, DiCaprio. Yeah. Oh, such Happy a real dark day for mankind. Or Robert De Niro. Also real dark day for mankind. Or Kathy Griffin. Slightly less, but still a semi dark day for mankind. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be dark day or, uh, who else? It's like I don't know. I think you've given us a good enough list of people. Um, either Kathy Griffin or um, Barack Obama. That'd be, yeah, a lot of dark, dark days for humanity. There. We should do a podcast where we're just naming people who we would be sad if they died. I mean, it'd be a great be, podcast. It'd be riveting. I'm pretty sure everyone would listen to it nonstop, constantly. No one would hate that. Yeah. Well, if you haven't turned off by now, um, here's our. Um, we had a really great conversation with Isabel. Um, she's really talented. She's uh, she's a really great actress. Pearson is on USA. Starts Wednesday nights at ten. Please go watch it. It's a really great show. Um, she's also uh, she's also in the film Driven, which came out uh last Friday. Last Friday. And Although um we talked about it as upcoming in the interview because we did interview her Thursday. Yeah, so it's it's out now. It's uh see it where you can. Yeah. Um the film stars uh Lee Pace, Jason Sudeikis, Corey Stroll, Judy Greer, Michael Cudless has an amazing cast. It's uh about the guy who made the DeLorean and some of his uh his life is kind of a bit of a true story. Yeah, it it it's a true story. It's you know John DeLorean's quest to design the ultimate car of the future, which leads to his downfall thanks to his friendship with an FBI informant. Yeah. The movie sounds insane. Like, it really does, insane. honestly. Yeah, like, I, I don't know. It's like, and we, there's actually, it, it was really interesting going into the making of the film and sort of putting that whole thing together. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's really great. We won't delay you any further. Uh, please check out Pearson. On uh at U on UNC at USA U USA yeah USA Network um not America yeah. it's, it's it's America's network USA uh Wednesday night at ten um it's really great please remember as always please subscribe give us five stars write us review even if you have the time yeah but uh. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, without further ado, here's our conversation with Isabel. Enjoy. Hey, Isabella, uh, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you for having me. Yeah, it's great so, to have you. So I just want to start off by talking about Pearson. And great. as as someone who's moving to Chicago in a couple of weeks, it did not make me excited. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, I didn't, it's very, yeah, I didn't so. know you were moving to Chicago. I, I am. Great. I'm moving to Chicago for college, and I'm definitely not oh. getting involved in politics. Okay, do not. <laughs> Do the, it's it's very twisty. Yeah. It's 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 interesting. How um this is your was this so this this is your first starring role, right? In like mm -hmm. a TV series. How did that yeah. feel when you got on the set? Like that you were like, Oh my god, I'm starring in this T V show. Like what is that feeling like? It's surreal. You know, first of all, I have to say we shoot the show in LA. And so we only we were only in Chicago for a week to shoot exterior. So what we did was we built an exact like replica of City Hall um, in this giant warehouse. So we had like uh, we had a studio um, in Santa Clarita up north in California. And so I think that's when it hit me when I walked on that set and I saw Chicago like this fake Chicago. I was like, oh my god, the amount of money and power behind the show right to bring it all together i cannot believe that i'm part of this 
show and that I'm part of this machine, right? And we're creating all this magic and this illusion that we're in Chicago. And so it was, it's something that I couldn't really wrap my head around for quite a while. I think it's now hitting me as the show is airing, like months later, I'm like, oh my God, I was part of this. This is so cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah, George, go ahead. Yeah, that's definitely one of the things that must be interesting about it because you're filming it in such a different location to where it actually is set, but really if you go to the actual place, there's no difference, so that must be something that's kind of in your head just interesting to have, you know? Yeah, it it was very weird also. Like, fascinating, and at the same time, I'm like, like, yeah, it was surreal. I don't know how to describe it in any other way. Like, I had worked on – I had done, like, a couple of things before – uh, Pearson, but not to this, you know, not to this extent. Like this is by far the biggest thing I've I've done so far, and so it's really exciting to be a part of it, you know, and to have like a city like Chicago be the backdrop of everything, you know, um, yeah, that's that's really cool because it's it's such a historical city. It's you know um, such a it kind of like creates the perfect terrain for this very gnarly storytelling. So that's, that's exciting to be a part of. Yeah, it must be. And especially with um, this being like a spinoff of Suits, it must be exciting to kind of be on a show that comes off the heels of that, which, you know, obviously kind of got a lot of press from uh, that royal wedding recently. Oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. But it, I, I think it's important to mention that's like not Suits 2.0. Like this is a very completely different show um, and that we're very lucky to kind of have to be the mothership, but that this show could live entirely independent from Suits, right? So yeah. Suits has kind of created the structure and kind of the formula for Pearson, but it's a completely different animal. Just the tone of the show, the storytelling, even how it was shot, you know, it's just a very different aesthetic. So That's it's the, cool. Yeah. To, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. That's the one thing I noticed because I've, my sister used to watch Suits, so I kind of knew, like, the visual style of Suits. And this is much, much darker. Like, it looks oh, like yeah. a, like a, it looks like almost noir-ish. Noir-ish. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And I think that was the intention behind it. Like, I think that, the, like, it's such a stark contrast. And I think it was a very clear message from the beginning to our audience members. Like, okay, this is not Suits. Right. And so we are being very open about it from episode one. And I when I look at it from like a filming point of view, it just it, it feels like it was shot like a movie, you know, even kind of like the visual risks that a lot of these directors decided to take and the way that it was treated by one of our executive producers, Kevin Bray, who's like the mastermind behind it. Like it was very it was it was clearly done intentionally. So our audience members would not, you know, get that mistake, like mistaken that this was like, oh, the suits part two, you know? Yeah. One thing, yeah. one thing I want to actually ask you about, there's a one specific scene. I think it's actually your first scene like ever in the series is when you're standing in front of Gina Torres. Yeah. And, uh, and you're like, and you're like sassing her. And she, she, she's, I, the second I saw her, I knew she looked like a powerhouse. Like she looked scary to like, just to just, if you're on the wrong side of, of a conversation with her, like I would fear for my life was doing sort of, <laughs> was doing sort of scenes with um, Gina that were like, you know, you were kind of oppositional as a sort of, uh, as sort of, you know, sort of new to, sort of starring on TV, was that kind of a scary proposition doing scenes like that? It was actually really fun um, because our chemistry off camera is like one of almost like a sisterhood. I mean, it's, it's, we're very close. We became friends really fast. Um, And Gina's hilarious. Like she's actually very warm and very approachable, but she commands respect. Right. So every time she would walk on set, everyone on set would be like, super quiet they wouldn't joke around like we were very diligent um but that is basically the relationship that my character yoli has with jessica pearson right i mean it's it's very evident from the beginning that they're going to clash 
Um, and so that's very fun, I think, for actors to play, right? Because we want to play the conflict. Like, we want to go towards the conflict because that's where the meaty themes are. So I had a blast filming them because I knew, like, the second they would yell cut, you know, we would laugh about it or we would just, like, go to craft services and grab coffee and just, like, speak Spanish the whole time, which was, like, our way of communicating off camera. So, um, because Gina's Cuban, um, she's Mm -hmm. Afro-Latina, so she grew up here, but she she speaks fluent Spanish. And I think that that connection allowed us to kind of go those places without, you know, knowing that our feelings were going to get hurt. (laughs) So it was actually really fun for me. Those are my favorite scenes, by the way, when we we got to clash. Yeah. 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 um, Sorry, Andrew. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think that's definitely something that's great to have as an actor. It's, I think it must be especially good when you're such good friends for Offset because, you know, you can go into these scenes and, you know, you can kind of just go into it and never have any worry about, like, oh, what if she, like, gets annoyed at me because she thinks something is happening behind the scenes? Like, she thinks I have some weird feelings for her, you know? You right. Don't have to worry about that. You can just go into it and be like, you know, no matter what I say, that as soon as this is done, we're going to be laughing. Right, right. Yeah, I think also she created those boundaries very early on. Like she was, she's one of the executive producers, so she was very hands-on about uh, the final casting decisions. So she kind of hand-picked most of the cast members of the show. So I think having her at the helm of things really facilitated the whole chemistry of the group. I mean, I've never been on a show I've done, I was trained for theater. I mostly did theater most of my life and then started filming TV. And I've never been on a production theater or film that with a, with a cast, you know, with cast members that would get along so much and so well as, as this group of people. It's almost like I don't want to say it because I don't want to jinx it. And it was only like season one. And hopefully we get called to see, you know, like you, it's like a family, but like we do. It's like the chemistry is, amazing and we're just there to work like there's no drama knock on wood i'm knocking on it right now (laughs) (laughs) yeah Yeah. (laughs) but it's it's really cool it's like a really um cool group of people and i'm just like so lucky to be a part of it one thing i noticed about your character is she's very passionate about her own causes she seems she actually is probably one of the best people in the show in terms of like not trying to like having ulterior motive or not being bought by anybody because yeah. the the big thing of the show is everybody uh, has mm-hmm. something on everybody. So and it and it seems like you and if anybody has looked at your Instagram, it sees you're also very passionate about a lot of causes in Puerto Rico and just yeah. causes in general. Did you sort of bring that passion for charity to your character or what other things also, what other things did you sort of bring to Yoli? Well, it's interesting because I remember when I first got the size for my initial audition for this show. And I remember thinking I was in New York um, and everyone, all the producers were in LA, which meant that if I would were to keep moving forward with the, you know, callbacks and then testing, I would have to fly to LA and meet all of them. So when I got my sides in New York, I was like, ah, you know, I've seen this. This is kind of like the stereotypical Latino character. And the way she was written originally was almost like the very traditional dated narrative of Latinos in the U.S., which are like rough and tumble and they're kind of nasty and they know the streets, you know. And she was kind of like a wise ass, know it all kind of character. Yeah. And then when I got a call back, they asked me to incorporate certain notes and retape my audition. And I realized that they started to insert like a, a different kind of sensitivity. Like it became very three dimensional all of a sudden. And I was like, hmm, I think I misjudged this character. Um, I think I'm very interested about her. Then when I got tested for the show and I flew to LA, it was almost like they had rewritten the whole idea. And I think Gina, who created Yoli actually had a lot of saying, you know, a lot of say into the creation of the character. And so they kind of rewrote her. And when we started to film from like episode one to episode six, like the whole trajectory started becoming clearer and clearer and clearer. And they started taking like Yoli was a Puerto Rican girl 
who grew up in Chicago. And by episode two, they decided that Yoli was actually a DACA recipient. Hmm. And she's in fear of being deported. And we will find out uh, on episode six this upcoming Wednesday. Um, and it's mentioned before, so it's kind of like not a spoiler. Or kind of it is not so. I don't know when this is going to air, but now I I'm did, like, oh, I should Yeah, that. I did miss yesterday's episode, so please okay. keep that in mind. I, I will. <laughs> no I spoilers. Will. Yeah, you don't I want to spoil spoilers. it for Andrew there. Yeah. <laughs> but, I, was, I was in it. <laughs> but there's something about her hunger for learning, for being so proud of her roots, being hard work, you know, a hard worker. Um, this girl has nothing to lose. Right. And so yeah. when she's introduced into this very corrupt world, it's almost she's like a beacon of hope and light of like being a good citizen. And I love that. It's so I mean, I think it's uh, it's so interesting that she's the one who's doing the right thing. And it's the one character that's not American. Right. It's the one character who's mm-hmm. not a citizen, but she believes in this country. She believes that we could do good. She believes that we could be better. And I think Yoli needs to learn boundaries. And I think Jessica will teach her that. Like I see the show and my trajectory in the story, like the education of Yoli Castillo. But I also think that it will soften Jessica Pearson. And I think it will remind her that we can do good without compromising your moral compass. So I think like both of us have a lot to learn from each other. And I love, I really love this character. And yes, Sorry, this is a really long answer. Oh no, it's but perfect. I, Don't worry about but it. But I, but I wanted to say that what I, what started happening was, um, they started to incorporate like my real energy into the character, because it was so evident. It was like these are much older men that are writing these parts, so they start shaping the characters based on um, some of the actors' personalities, and kind of Yoli is almost like. She's not the clown, but she brings levity to the show. That's already, like, so intense 90% of the time. So, like, that little 10% that belongs to Yoli, it's, like, the uplifting moment or, like, the cute moment. or And it's still, like, she's still grounded and she, she you know, she's still very direct and very clear with what she has to say. But she does bring levity. And yeah. that was me on set. You know what I mean? Well, you know me. We work together. Yeah, no, I mean, we... We're... Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I just feel like sense of humor was important and that's like crucial for me as a person. And so I think that's definitely something very personal that they decided to incorporate because it was like, it's gold. We can't recreate this. Let's put it into the show. So, yes, yeah. I think we're very, very similar. In certain yeah, one, one thing I did want to I want to mention, I mean, I think because for viewers don't know, I met you in an improv class. And yeah. nobody, nobody, nobody knew anything about this for the, as well. Like, no, nobody, you were, you were just, you were, people were just, you were just there and er, nobody had any idea that you were going to star in this huge USA series. No one had there. You were just like, I'm an actress. And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> so did you, so I'm sure you, I mean, did you, did you have any improv because sort of you're sort of the, levity of the show did you um did you sort of have any improvised scenes with uh with gina um kind of you remember that initial like the first episode the first scene that it's the second episode but it's the first episode that i'm on um, yeah yeah and in which we meet yoli um that whole dialogue was kind of something that happened to gina in real life and oh. so we, yeah, and so we played with the Spanish. That was improvised. And I think as we keep moving forward, there will be more and more space for that. Um, but that's why initially, that's why I took the classes, by the way, because I just wanted to get better before I had to, like, head back to L.A. and shoot some more. <laughs> and I'm just, like, yeah. not, I'm not a good improviser. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, you, okay, I think I need some help. <laughs> do you think now that, now that you're on the show, like taking class, if you if you progress more, like it's gonna get weirder because people would like recognize you. Do you think people would recognize me? I'm not sure. Like I, if they like, watch the show. Well, like you know what's been happening? It's like people say, "Oh my God, have I seen you before?" 
And I'm like, no, I don't think we've met before. But that's to the like that's that's the one thing that happens, and then they can't put it together. And I won't clarify. I'm not gonna be like, yeah, I started that U.S. Like, I'm not. I'm not gonna <laughs> yeah. say. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I don't think we've met before. Hi, nice to meet you. And I think that's to the extent where, like, I'm not Jennifer Lawrence. Hopefully, I'll be one day. But not, you know, but it's not like I have the celebrity status. But I don't know. And if people get weird, then I don't know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> I don't want it to get weird. I just want it to just reach to that point, like what's happening now. I just want it to be that. Like, be like, have I seen you before? That's it. But I don't know. I don't know, Andrew. We'll reconnect. Yeah. Maybe we'll take improv too, and we'll see Maybe how people I... react. <laughs> well, I'll be taking. Well, I'll probably be in Chicago though, so I don't know. Well, maybe you're gonna be in Second City. Yeah, so I'll be in an entirely different school, but no, maybe, maybe in the future. But you are in a film that's coming out tomorrow that there are yeah. a lot of recognizable people in. Driven. That's true. Yeah, I'm very yeah. excited about that. That was that was crazy, guys. That movie, yeah. shooting that movie was insane. By the yeah. way. No, really. Uh, yeah. Could you share with us a little bit about how insane it was, maybe? Like, do you have any fun stories from set? Well, no. Well, okay. First of all, I think, like, I've been working on projects with a lot of famous comedians, and I think it's a trend now in Hollywood in which, like, very famous people that usually, you know, do comedy are now in these very dramatic roles or are just becoming a little bit more commercial. Um, yeah. and it's, in, it's very interesting because I feel like comedians have extreme personalities. They're like either very, very awkward or just, they can't turn it off. Like I did this other movie with Jim Gaffigan and it was a horrendous movie. It was so intense. It was so ugly. It was very gratuitous and extremely <laughs> violent. And Jim Gaffigan, like every time we would cut, we like, okay like i can't do jim gaffigan but he's like how about that hot pocket i'm like jim shut up like i'm supposed to be crying like my baby died like shut <laughs> up so he made it very difficult for the rest of us to kind of concentrate but he's amazing um but driven was my first movie i had just graduated from acting school uh it was 2017 and i had booked um where did you go to acting on- school for the record, I went just, to Juilliard. Oh, you went to Ju? Oh, wow. We're dealing. With oh, that. that's that's fancy. Yeah, fancy. That's a that's a whole different story, guys. Yeah, <laughs> I went to Juilliard. That was very intense and very wonderful. Um, and I booked that film right out of uh, grad school, and uh, I booked another show called um, The Oath, which was produced by Fifty Cent, and I had a heavy recurring role on that show. But Driven came up first. And then when they announced the cast, like, a week before I, like, headed into production, I was like, oh, and by the way, you're going to be with Lee Pace and Judy Greer and Jason Sudeikis. No biggie. And I was like, oh, I'm not freaking out. You're freaking out. Um, So I went into production, and we shot in Puerto Rico because Puerto Rico has these um, tax laws that are actually great incentives for filmmakers and so it's very affordable to shoot there so they get big tax breaks so puerto rico had a very young um filmmaking industry so a lot of things were shooting there and so we headed down to pr and maria the hurricane is about to come towards us and there hadn't been a hurricane in 20 years so we were like Ah, we're fine. And by the way, I'm originally from Puerto Rico. So I kept telling everyone on set, like, don't worry about it. We haven't seen, like, a hurricane in 20 years. This is not good. And we left at 4 in the morning on the last flight leaving because we were going to stay. And then we got this emergency evacuation at 4 a.m. They came to our door. They came to my hotel room. Uh, one of the people from production said, you got to leave now. Just take your ID, take your money, take your phone and whatever you have, leave all the suitcases because we're going to come back in probably a week. It's going to be fine. Um, so leave all your stuff. You don't have time to pack. You got to leave now. And I said, but I'm from here. I'm not going to leave my family. He's like, no, you're here contractually obligated. You're a liability. You have to leave the country. And so they 
took us on the last flight leaving San Juan. Mm -hmm. And then we didn't hear, I didn't hear about my family for three weeks. Oh, wow. And I didn't know if they were okay. There were no communications. It was terrible. But two weeks into the hurricane, like after the hurricane, we decided to fly back to Puerto Rico. And obviously, like, to finish the movie, but it had become, like, a humanitarian brigade. Like, we brought food. We brought um, just essential stuff for the crew members. Half of them had lost their home. Um, I needed to find my family. I mean, it was just, like, so, the whole thing was so schizophrenic. It was just so uh, intense. And on top of that, I was, like, starstruck that I was working with these people. And I never you know work on film before so i didn't Mm -hmm. i didn't know like the basic things like oh remember to hit the mark and i was like what's a mark like i didn't even know basic stuff (laughs) and they were losing their patience it was it was just so and of course we were operating on sunlight and then at night we had just a limited amount of diesel to operate and to light up the set but it just seems so like the stark contrast of us having light and food and essentials in a place where there had been a humanitarian crisis and people were dying because there was no water, no electricity, no food. And the fact that we were just shooting this Hollywood film, it just seems so indulgent. But the thing is, we returned to finish the film because we had people, you know, to give them paychecks and kind of restore the sense of normalcy and bring aid. So. I think about it and I'm still like processing that. And it happened two years ago. Like it was too intense for me, honestly. Yeah. That was a really long story too. (laughs) It's fine. (laughs) Uh, So I think we're just about ready to wrap up here. So just one last question for you before you go is, um, do you have any advice for any aspiring actors or people who are trying to get into the industry? (sighs) It's really hard. But if it's your passion, keep at it. I feel like every no leads you to your yes. And we have this idea that the grass is greener on the other side, but it never is, right? We live in a capitalist society, so we're always comparing ourselves, right? Who has more roles? Who has this? Who I don't have this, you know? But if you yeah. work on your craft, you just keep at it and remind yourself that every no, because that's mostly what our industry, you know, is basically you're just living there and trying to be resilient with every no that you hear, which in the life of an artist, it's what's mostly going to happen. You'll get, you'll hear more no's than yes. Like I had to do 200 auditions to get five yeses. Mm -hmm. So like when you think about it and you contextualize it for yourself and if this, this is your passion, just keep at it, keep training, keep your head in the game and, you know, remember it's about it's a it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. Oh my god. That was a really yeah. like trite sound bite, but it, I mean it. I totally mean it. Does so, it feel odd yeah. that even that after all this time you're like you're like now giving advice to other actors? Like how is that you know that must be like does that feel like strange? No, I have to, I have to give, this advice is also for myself. Like yeah. right now after shooting, I'm on this hiatus and I don't know where my next paycheck is, is going to come from. Right. So it's yeah. also for me to remind myself, like, be patient. Careers are very long. You know, one minute you're up, one minute you're down. So, I mean, I, I share this every day. I have to remind myself, like I can and I will, and I still audition for things and I mostly hear no. And just, I remind myself of it all the time. And, and, uh, so yeah, I'm in solidarity with the rest of us. You know, I think it's just like we're a community of, of young people who just want to make change, you know, but it, it does feel a little bit weird because I, again, I think there's this narrative that gets built around certain ideas like, well, she's not struggling or she's not going through this. And it's not true. You know, it's like, I still cry about not getting certain things that I was very passionate about or feel that X, Y, and Z is like, it's unfair. So it's a very long marathon and the, and the race is always with yourself. So I'm grateful. Yeah. To say it out loud. Exactly. I mean, I completely empathize with that. Like as a comedian, like you're the amount of no's is probably equal to like getting booed at a comedy club. 
And the amount of times as I've been starting in comedy that I get booed as a comedian, it's, it, 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 it's almost like, why would I ever do it again? After really, after one time, oh my god! To you? Oh no, it's happened that to me several me times. Feel better. Oh my god! <laughs> oh yeah, that's please. Horrendous. Yeah. No. Yeah, I can confirm that. it has happened to Andrew. He's as much been, of an asshole as that makes it. me sound, I I know that it has happened. I've seen it happen. He's, he's seen he's seen it happen, and it is just you want to die in that moment. I mean, we did improv together. I honestly improv is easier. I feel like imp- improv so much easier than stand up because an oh, improv yeah. an improv if you if you if you don't know what you're doing then that's your excuse. But if you do great and you know what you're doing, it's great. It's good because so cuz if you either way it goes, it's like it's how it uh what was I saying? I just lost my train of thought. Either either <laughs> if you if you mess up, you get a laugh because the audience is like, "Well, it's improv," so they didn't right. know what they. Were. But in stand up, they know you're you're coming up there prepared, so they know oh if you mess God. up, then, yeah, it's it's. I am it's actually now that you're saying it, like I went to Dangerfield, the comedy club on the east side here in New York. Which one? And uh, Dangerfield is that like? Oh, Dangerfield. Dangerfield. Yeah. No. I yeah. Know. Yeah. And um, that was painful. Like, yes, I saw two guys go up. And uh, yeah, you're taking me back to a really cringeworthy moment, actually. <laughs> and they weren't like, we didn't boo him, but we we're like, yikes, man, just get off the stage, you know? That's yeah. terrible. Okay. Oh, wow. That's rough. Okay. That makes yeah. me feel a little bit better about I, my career. I, I, <laughs> that was the goal. That's why we brought you on here. We wanted to make you feel better. <laughs> Yeah, you can hear Andrew sad stories and think about other people and just start feeling good about yourself. <laughs> exactly. Andrew. <laughs> um, thank you guys for having me. This was such a treat. It was so fun. Thank, thank um, you for coming on. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm.